Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. My name is Nate, and welcome back to another weather forecast discussion for March 26, 2022. The season of spring is in full bloom, despite some people not seeing its full effects quite yet. And with that comes the most active time period for tornadoes. Similar to the last tornado outbreak, the Storm Prediction Center has now issued outlooks for days 4 through 6, with a 15% chance of severe weather on Tuesday the 29th, a rare 30% chance of severe weather on Wednesday the 30th, and a 15% chance of severe weather on Thursday the 31st. Now we'll have all sorts of information about that and more as we continue to move on through, but before I do say that, please be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications to stay up to date with all the latest information leading up to this event. And please be sure to hit that like button down below to help me get this video out to more and more people on YouTube, essentially helping me spread this information. That's how YouTube's algorithm works. And also to help me get this information out to more and more people, please copy the link to this video and spread it on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, even friends and family, and on other social media platforms. And without further ado, let's go take a look. And the interesting thing here is that we're going to be using the North American model in the beginning because this actually has a bit of an idea as to what could potentially happen on Tuesday. So let's take a look at the simulated radar from now up till then. And you can see here as of right now, we got some scattered snow showers in portions of the Great Lakes and the Northeast as well as Ontario and Quebec. That'll continue to linger on through all the way through in towards the Sunday morning and Sunday afternoon hours. Portions of the Pacific Northwest near British Columbia and Vancouver Island still continue to get a lot of precipitation. And then California now starts to get its first band of the low pressure system that starts to surge on through. And basically that is the catalyst of our new severe weather event that is going to move off through the central portions of the United States all the way through towards the East Coast. Now, as of right now, you see there's a lot of scattered precipitation. The prairies get a lot of snow, and then some areas over here in the Rockies, some portions get rain, some portions get snow as well. But there's going to be a lot of precipitation in behind this building. And then as this continues to move on through towards Tuesday afternoon and Tuesday evening, you can see that's when everything starts to congeal, at least right around where the low pressure system is in towards the central and northern portions of the Great Plains. You see you have a lot of snow and freezing rain on the back side of this, but you don't see where the severe weather could exist in the central portions of the United States. And that is mainly because there's a bit of a limiting factor according to what the North American model says. Of course, if we get into the nitty gritty of this, we take a look at the 500 millibar wind shear first. You can see our big jet stream dipping on through. This is our trough that's digging on through the eastern portions of the United States. We have our low pressure system right above that trough. And then we have a big ridge that's starting to build behind this to where you can see our high pressure system over the southwestern portions of the United States. That is eventually going to move off further and further to the east. And you can see our new trough that begins to develop and dig on through in towards portions of California into the southwestern portions of the United States, moving on through in towards the central United States. And this is the beginning of our severe weather. You can see how we have our trough that digs on through Mexico in towards the southern United States. And then at the top over here, at the top part of your screen, we also see that we have a bit of a ridge over here towards portions of the western prairies of Canada. And that is basically going to take a couple of these low pressure systems that are up here and towards portions of the Hudson Bay and drive it down further south. And so what happens here is you have our first low pressure system that digs off and moves through the Great Plains and into the Great Lakes. Then we have our second one that comes in behind this, and this creates our severe weather threat here on Wednesday for portions of Dixie Alley. And we can see how we have even some stronger amounts of wind shear more evenly distributed here on Wednesday into Thursday, and we can see how this could potentially be an issue leading off in towards the latter stages of next week. So definitely something to monitor with that wind shear level of 500 millibars. And at the 850 millibar level, you can see how the wind shear starts to kind of move out. We have a bit of a high pressure system building in towards portions of the Gulf of Mexico. This is gonna create some flow here, some clockwise flow that's gonna basically grab a lot of this moisture in the Gulf of Mexico and pull it up out in front of this big low pressure system moving on through. And then that is basically going to supply the fuel for all the severe weather out in front of this. So you can see Tuesday, we have a pretty strong low level jet here indicating that there could be potentially some severe weather. And then as we move from Tuesday to Wednesday, you can see how the low level jet does increase. We have a bit of a boundary that develops on the backside and some more enhanced level shear out in front of this, as well as our high pressure system, basically keeping all of this activity confined in towards portions 
of the Mississippi River and Dixie Alley as well as into the Ohio River Valley. And that's going to continue to basically intensify further and further. And you can see how this continues to move on through in towards Thursday as well. Now with the NAM, you can see that moisture starting to return towards the Central Plains here as this progresses in towards Monday and further on to Tuesday. Look at the spread here and how the dew points start to get more and more moist. You can see a lot of widespread 60 degree dew points ranging as far north as Omaha. That's probably where the triple point is all the way down towards Kansas, even into portions of Oklahoma and Texas. And basically this area out in front over here is where I am anticipating where the potential severe weather threat could lie. Now, unfortunately, the NAM doesn't go super far out. So we have to go to the Euro here and you can see that relatively widespread dew points here as we move from Wednesday and further on towards the afternoon hours of Wednesday, you can see another relatively confined area of moisture basically being put through just this general area of the Mississippi River. If you follow it all the way up towards the delta of the Mississippi River and the Ohio River, and even further up towards portions of central Illinois into Indiana, you have a relatively confined area of moisture, which could indicate the potential for severe weather even as far north as Chicago. And so definitely something to watch out for with that. And then this continues to elongate further and further on towards Thursday to where there could be a more severe weather threat towards portions of the East Coast, ranging as far south as Georgia and as far north as I would say the Mid-Atlantic in towards portions of the Delmarva Peninsula. Now, I want to mention something really interesting here because we're going to talk about the convective available potential energy, and then we're going to talk about something that's the opposite of that. So the convective available potential energy is basically the energy in the atmosphere for thunderstorms to either form or sustain. And the way you get that is you have warm air rising and cold air sinking. So if you have a greater displacement, you have more energy for thunderstorms to either form or sustain. So let's see what happens here from Tuesday morning into Tuesday evening. You can see the Cape starts to rise across areas of Kansas, Nebraska, even towards portions of Oklahoma and Texas, and even becomes pretty widespread in upwards of about 1,800 to 2,000 joules per kilogram across much of these areas. And so we do have a decent amount of cape for a severe weather event to actually occur over here. But the thing is, so what happens if you don't have air that is willing to rise? Let's say you have really hot air above really warm air. And to do that, let's take a look at a few things. So first off, I want to point out where the actual boundary actually is. So here is your cold front that exists right along this area, right? This is as far west as you can get severe weather at this current time period. And then we'll mark right about here. Actually, let's mark about here towards the border of Kansas and Nebraska as to how far north your severe weather could potentially be, all right? It could be a little bit further north, but for this explanation, let's just go ahead and say as far north as the Kansas and Nebraska border. Now you see how the dew points are relatively confined in between all these lines, or at least further east of that. But let's take a look at something called the 925 millibar temperature, all right? This is about a half a kilometer above ground level, all right? And you take a look at the temperatures across the board, and you see that there are relatively hot temperatures over here at about 21 to 17 degrees Celsius, all right? It's at minimum 17 degrees Celsius. And so I've outlined, uh, let's actually change the color here. I've outlined in pink as to where the really warm temperatures are along that line are. But then let's go over to the 850 millibar temperature, which is one kilometer above ground level. And you can see right throughout much of these areas that anywhere that's in between this black line on the western edge and that pink line is where there could potentially be some severe weather. But you notice that areas further off towards the east, you see 19 degrees Celsius, 20 degrees, 21 degrees Celsius, all right? If you have relatively warmer temperatures above cooler temperatures, that cool air does not want to rise. That cool air is going to continue to sink. And so because of that, we don't have any rising motion in some of these areas. And because of that, that could limit our environment. If that actually continues to play a factor here to where these warm or hot temperatures well above the surface continues to linger within this area, there could not potentially be a severe weather event for us to talk about on Tuesday. So that is the positive note. But on the other hand, if this weakens, all right, if this area of capping inversion, this limiting factor weakens and these temperatures go down, we will be talking about a severe weather event on Tuesday. 
Now, as we get closer and closer, we're going to have more and more information as to what exactly makes this event tick. We have the general idea, but as we get closer and closer to about two days to maybe even the day before the event, we're probably going to have the best idea as to what could potentially happen. So stay tuned to that. We'll have more videos that will be uploaded as we get closer and closer to this event. But right now, let's just try and figure out as to where those thunderstorms could potentially be. And to do that, we're going to look at the instantaneous. And to do that, we're going to take a look at the instantaneous flash rate, which basically takes a look at how many lightning strikes occur within a six hour time period. And you can see from Tuesday afternoon into Tuesday evening and even the overnight hours, it becomes pretty widespread from areas over in Iowa and Nebraska, extending all the way down towards the central and southern plains. They all practically could potentially get some severe weather. And this continues to move on through from Wednesday morning into Wednesday afternoon and evening, where areas that got impacted in the 22nd time frame during that four out of five on the severe weather scale could potentially see some more severe weather. And then this will continue to extend all the way further from the Wednesday into Thursday hours, as well as into the Thursday afternoon hours to where there could be some more severe weather elongated across much of the East Coast. But on the other hand, let's dive in over towards what we briefly mentioned in the beginning of our video, which was the potential winter weather threat. You can see a lot of snow and freezing rain starts to congeal across portions of Ontario, as well as Manitoba, portions of the Dakotas, as well as in towards Minnesota, Wisconsin, and areas near Superior and Lake Michigan. That will continue to be the case, but if you're further south of, say, the central portions of Lake Michigan all the way down towards Erie and Ontario, I'm expecting your wintry precipitation to start to melt more and more. And say if you're even towards portions of Huron, that could even melt as far early as possibly Thursday morning. So something to watch out for. But then on the backside, you can see a lot of wintry precipitation over here, again, for portions of northern Illinois as well as into Iowa and Wisconsin. So that could basically relayer itself over as it continues from Thursday morning in towards Thursday afternoon. So definitely something to watch out for with that. And then some more wintry activity as cold air continues to plunge itself behind all these low pressure systems and continue to basically ravage much of the Ohio River Valley in towards portions of the Northeast and basically create a little bit more wintry precipitation for some of those areas. So definitely something to watch out for with that. You can see our snow totals across the areas near Superior. You guys could see possibly two feet of snow or even higher than that. And uh, even areas further north of that in towards other areas of Ontario, you could see about, I'd say, a foot to a foot and a half of snow. The further south you go, the lesser the snow you could probably get because that more than likely will turn more into rain or freezing rain. And uh, you can see as far south as, say, Illinois, Indiana, even in towards portions of Iowa and Missouri, you guys don't really see a whole lot. An inch to even three inches is possible, but nothing really too significant on that regard. However, the freezing rain total still could be potentially significant the closer you are towards some areas of the Great Lakes. Northern Michigan, you guys are probably going to get the most of this in regards to the freezing rain department in upwards of an inch to an inch and a quarter. You guys remember what I said in my winter weather coverages way back in towards early stages of winter. I said it only takes three quarters of an inch of ice for you to actually have a playable ice surface for an NHL ice hockey game. And you guys could see even more than that in towards portions of Wisconsin and Michigan. So I hope this gives you guys a general idea as to what to anticipate. Of course, I will be uploading more and more videos as we get closer and closer to this. And I will have a new video for you guys tomorrow night, which would be Sunday the 27th. So. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys did enjoy the video, please be sure to hit that thumbs up button as well. As subscribe if you are new and turn on notifications. Share this with friends and family and on social media. Also, follow me on social media. Link will be in the description down below. And that's going to be it for me. I will see you guys tomorrow night. So peace out, everyone.